Today's reading is from the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 20, verses 4 through 7. Then I saw a throne, and they sat on I saw? Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God. And those who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand. And they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison. That's today's reading. Good evening. Glad to have you with us for our Wednesday night Bible study. Of course, Community Bible Church, 45 Southfield Road. Come and join us. Come and join us. I'm glad that you're listening in on YouTube or if it's uh, Facebook, but uh, you need to be in a local Bible church growing in the it's the body of Christ. So. Glad you could uh, be here tonight. And glad that you're listening in. First, we want to open in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for another evening that we can come together. And we pray that as we come together, we ask for forgiveness of our sins, for our shortcomings. Help us, Lord, to come into that holy presence. We pray that you would uh, bless us now. Help us, uh, Holy Spirit, to understand the scriptures prepare our hearts for what's ahead of us, and then in the present day and age in which we live, to live our life uh, to the maximum uh, of, of our ability for you. We love you. Bless your word as it goes forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, uh, thank you, Greg, for uh, reading, starting at verse 4. And we're in the, <clears throat> the, the chapter that comes right after uh, the battle at Armageddon. And so now we're looking at what happens to the beast and the false prophet. That's Revelation 19. They get placed into not not uh, the pit. They get they get placed into hell. They're the first two individuals that go into hell. And the interesting thing I was reading today, and I may have said this before, but it says they're placed alive into the lake of fire. You know what that means? Their bodies. Uh, now, they're, they're, the bodies that are going to be placed into the lake of fire are going to be permanent bodies. Because otherwise they burn up. They're going to be permanent bodies. They're going to be uh, bodies that they have that are going to last forever in that, in that fallen condition. Okay? But uh, that's the lake of fire. Then it come to Revelation chapter 20 in the first uh, couple verses there. Talk about uh, uh, Satan. And Satan, it says that he is uh, taken by uh, by an angel and he's placed in chains. They're not everlasting chains. If you go to the book of Jude and you go to 2 Peter, and 2 Peter particularly, the word that is transliterated in the English is Tartarus. And that's where they go and it says they have everlasting chains. They will not be released until the great white throne judgment, and they'll still have chains. Huh. Boy, if we find out about what their sins were back in Genesis chapter 6, the sons of God that were fallen, those were the fallen angels, came in unto the daughters of men, and uh, they produced uh, what uh, the context says as giants, but it was a hybrid type being, a species, and God is the only one that can uh, create. But the angels take this, uh, their uh, species, and mix them with the human species, and they come up with a hybrid. Uh, the, the name Nephilim comes to, comes to uh, attach, our attention. And then we know from the book of Jude that uh, God t took these individuals and placed them into um, Tartarus, uh, where there are everlasting chains. And the human aspect of that being that was produced could not be saved because devils can't be, be saved. 
And so God was not going to allow uh, a species that he did not uh, uh, plan and order. Uh, and so that he, he stopped it. And, and that, may, that, that definitely was one of the significant reasons why the, the world had to be destroyed. Significant reason. And it says they did continue, all they did was to continually think evil. And uh, God uh, was sorry that he had made man. And of course he saw Noah and Noah, of course, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Well, that's the beginning here. And Satan is taken and he's laced in this... Uh, Satan has taken a place into the pit, the abuso, uh, the bottomless pit, and we find that out from Revelation chapter 9 and verse 2, where the angel is given the key to the bottomless pit. It's the fallen, uh, it's the star that falls from heaven, and he's given the bottomless pit, and we talked about that in the past, but I'd like to make a couple of uh, comments right now about that. Since in verse number seven, which uh, Greg also read, it says this, now when the thousand years had expired, Satan will be released from his prison. So this is his time where he's locked up, he can't deceive the world, earlier on in the chapter it says that. Uh, he's got the seal of God, which means uh, no one can uh, uh, change the order, he's there, he can't get loose. And it says that he cannot deceive the world until he comes out at the end of the uh, millennium. So I'm going to read this again. When the thousand years, verse 7, had expired, Satan was released from his prison. Now that's, that's, that's the pit. That's the bottomless pit. It had been opened in Revelation chapter 9, verse 2. And who came out of it? Uh, demons came out to torment humankind. Except for the <clears throat> believers who had, believers in Christ who had received uh, the seal of God in their foreheads. Okay. Just read Revelation chapter 9. All right. I want to make a comment because uh, about this because uh, I, I, I was probably uh, watching this today and it caught my attention and I might have brought this up before but uh, uh, I'm not sure. And it's uh, this, uh, this uh, scientific endeavor that the world has come together to uh, produce a portal to another dimension called CERN. Capital C, capital E, capital R, capital N. I don't know if you've heard of that before. Uh, but it's, it's worthy of our attention. Uh, they have spent, the, the, there are 23 countries in the world, the United States being one of them. We entered in in 1997, I think, what, 1995 or 1997, into this agreement of nations. And there are 23 of them, and it's in Geneva, Switzerland, where they're building this uh, atom uh, uh, collider and it's just going so fast and uh, uh, this has been over a period of years and now presently uh, they have uh, uh, accomplished something that uh, was a goal and uh, what goal was that well first of all this is the, the, the CERN is about particle physics and uh, they're they're looking and they think that they have opened up another dimension recently. Now, I'll tell you why this is important as we're talking about in the context of our Bible study. But they believe that it's an alternate universe because they have seen uh, uh, matter that they've never seen that uh, does not match the universe that we live in as far as, as, far as the outreaches of our scientific uh, know-how. And, and they're looking into what they believe is uh, uh, a different uh, universe, um, an alternative universe. Uh, and uh, by the way, China doesn't want to be left behind. China is doing the same thing. Now China wouldn't be allowed in there. Russia was, was, was allowed in there at one time, but ever since the uh, Ukraine, they kicked Russia out so that they can't be a part of this, but they really believe that uh, they're, they're able to get into an alternative universe. Well, we know that there are, uh, our scientists tell us that there are many dimensions. We don't know how many dimensions. I've heard, I've heard some scientists say as much as 23, 24, 25, 26 dimensions. I don't know how he came up with that, but I'm not a scientist. 
So some that are working with uh, CERN are attempting to open up, and this is what they say with their mouths, some to open up the bottomless pit. Now that sounds sensational, but I'll tell you, uh, tell you why, because uh, I'll tell you in a minute where I'm getting this information from. But they've made comment about, to some, about uh, uh, some of the higher-ups uh, and the purpose of uh, beginning this particle physics uh, atom collider. To purposely to open up the bottomless pit. It's scriptural. Now, those who are the CEOs are tight-lipped about it. They won't uh, mention it, uh, uh, you know, in, in connection with the 23 countries or so forth or whatever. But um, this is what they have said to some. They are also interested in learning about time travel. Now, I'm, I am the part of this thing from a scientist that you can imagine. Uh, but these, the, they've got the most brilliant scientists in the world. And they've been doing this for decades. Decades. But just recently is the time that they penetrated, they believe, into another uh, portal. And they're interested in time travel. Now you know why China is doing the same thing, only China's has to be bigger, China's has to be better. Yes, yeah. That's what they're doing. That's what China's doing. And by the way, in connection with the fact of opening up the bottomless pit, there is a claim of ritual worship and hailing of Lord Shiva. I don't know if you've ever heard of Lord Shiva, but this has been an, um, a god that has uh, been back into uh, antiquity. And uh, they are hailing him. They are looking for him for guidance. What is Lord Shiva? What does the name stand for? The destroyer of worlds. Kind of interesting that you have a people that are alive today that are scientists that don't believe in God, but they believe in Lord Shiva, or at least a certain number of them that are in this project do. They have placed, listen, and you, you can look on, um, you can look on, um, I don't know about Facebook, but you can, you can look on Google, you can Google it, and they have placed a life-size statue of Lord Shiva in the Geneva, Switzerland, where a, by the way, uh, right out in front of the collider, right out in front of it, uh, and uh, it's, it's very easy, it's, it's not hidden. They put that there for a purpose. And um, also, it's, it's understood that this is where a supposed ritual that took place with a human sacrifice. Uh, that along these past decades that they had a sacrifice of a human being. Now, they don't admit to that. They say, no, we wouldn't do that. But the moment that you would admit to that, you're going to lose another uh, billions of dollars from uh, the average citizen in, in, on this planet. And they found out that uh, you're doing some kind of uh, uh, safe worship. Uh, and this is where the CERN experiments take place, and this is Geneva, Switzerland. All right, so I bring that up, why? Because uh, if, if this is the pit, and uh, when I say pit, I'm talking about the bottomless pit, then the Bible says in Revelation chapter 9, and we're just going back because we're talking about where Satan is being placed in our study tonight. In Romans, I'm Romans, Revelation 9, it says, Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given. So we're looking here, an entity that falls from the heavens to the earth. And we know that Satan and the angels fell from the heavens to the earth. We also know that presently Satan has access to, to, to heaven, so that he, in Revelation chapter 12, is called the accuser of the brethren. So that's what he does. He accuses us in our sin before God and uh, we have a mediator. We have an advocate, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he stands in and he says, yes, but he has my righteousness. He's got my blood and so they're forgiven. Uh, and so, uh, 
this angel that falls uh, has the key to the bottomless pit. And he opens the bottomless pit. I'm reading Revelation uh, 9 and verse 2. He opens the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the, the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came up, up upon the earth and to them was given power as scorpions on the earth and they have power. And uh, if, if you go down a little bit further, and it just goes into all kinds of uh, uh, different descriptions of what they do. This is called, the, during this period of time, it's uh, uh, called Death Takes a Vacation. For five months, uh, these uh, demons are able to uh, torture humankind. This is part of the tribulation period. And uh, during this, the wanting to die, but they won't be able to die. Just read chapter 9. And verse 11 says, And they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew is Abaddon, but in the Greek his name is Apollyon. So we see the name of the king that is over the bottomless pit. We see that there's a star that falls from heaven. He's given a key to open up the bottomless pit. All right, now here's, here's my thinking. Okay? Um... This bottomless pit, if we're living in the days that are just about uh, time for the bottomless pit to be opened, and that will happen during the tribulation period, could God be allowing this godless world to come together like Psalm chapter 2 to uh, put uh, something together that could open up the dimension? Is that possible? We don't know what the key is. We honestly think in physical terms like this. We say, now this is a key. Uh, I'm the only one that can use it. It's the only key I got to get in my car and start it. Okay, so the key is something that is a means of authority for accomplishing something. So um, is it possible that this uh, group of godless 23 nations there are seven other nations that are assistants, assistant uh, members. So that would be 30. Uh, are they right on the verge of opening that pit? This is prayers to Satan going on. Uh, this is uh, Lord Shiva. Uh, whoever this angel that comes on down is given authority to be able to uh, open the pit. Could it be Lord Shiva? Lord Shiva is you know, some idol, but it represents some demon. And we know that there are great demons like uh, Apollyon or Abaddon. We know that these demons have uh, greater powers than others. And so, uh, is it possible they're right on the verge now? It makes sense. Everything else is coming together. Uh, but that can't happen until God allows it. And are these scientists going to be the ones that do it? Not necessarily. But go back to 1970, we wouldn't ever be having a discussion like this if we were reading the, and trying to interpret the book of uh, Revelation. Go back to the 80s, we wouldn't. Go back to the 90s, you might start thinking about it. But it's not until recently, I'm talking about this past year, that uh, they, they say that they uh, opened a portal. Okay? And so they say that they're going to continue to work on this and it cost them uh, five billions. Uh, $5 billion, but it's de decades of uh, work, the top scientists in the world. And by the way, they're praying to Lord Shiva. They're praying to Satan. And so Satan uh, uh, could give them insight uh, as to some ideas uh, to encourage them to come up with this because he wants to try to get the uh, pit open. But remember this, can't be opened by man. Can't be opened by Satan. It has to be according to God's plan. His timing. I'm just wondering. It's interesting. Uh, so keep that in mind. I want to bring that up. because. Uh, uh, by the way, um, in Genesis chapter 11 and verses 5 through 9. Genesis 11, 5 through 9. This, this ties in with it. It really does. This ties in with CERN. Genesis 11, 5 through 9. What does it say? Uh, well, uh, this particular pa uh, passage talks about 
the Tower of Babel. And what happened in the Tower of Babel? Well, we had uh, uh, Nimrod, who determined that he was going to do something, that uh, he was going to uh, keep God out of uh, their lives, and he developed a kingdom, and he was going to reach heaven. And so he's building this tower. And uh, so it's, it's uh, by the way, isn't that interesting? I'm going to read uh, from Genesis 11, 5 through 9. I'm studying for this lesson, and uh, I'm taking a break, and I turned the TV on, and you know what was on there? It, it was Noah's Ark, uh, but I mean, it was the movie, the Bible, and then right after Noah's Ark, it went right into the Tower of Babel. And it said these things, and it ties in with our lesson. I just, I find stuff like that happening often. Uh, when I'm studying. Uh, I could give you another example from this last week. Uh, Bible studies that come on, uh, you know, two or three Bible studies this last week, it's the very same thing that I'm studying in order to share. And in Revelation 11, 5 through 9, and watch this, what it says, because it fits right in. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men did build. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are all one and they have all one language and this is what they've begun to do now nothing what they purpose to do will be withheld from them so if you have a bible you underline that verse god came down for a reason it was a it was a a, a rebellion against god it was a rebellion against the known will of god and uh, they didn't even have the Bible, but they had the passed on uh, word uh, from Noah. And it says, I want to read it again. It says, uh, now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Think about that for a minute. God is looking down. Something evil is happening. They're trying to raise a, a building to heaven, but behind this uh, uh, building of this building is the intent of the people to push God out and to make their own heaven. Is that what the one world government's doing today? Yes. And who are they leaving out of it? God. And how? Don't. Uh, of course, we know that uh, Nimrod was knew the gospel, knew from Noah's sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, because it's only hundred years that. Uh, civilization had expanded in that period of time and so here's uh, all of them knew that, that God was real and that they needed to exercise faith in God and his principles and the truths that were shared from them by their ancestors you know who was uh, still alive during that? well Noah was Ham, Shem and Japheth were still alive during the time of Babel uh, not a part of it civilization had spread they only had one language but this is important uh, because this Tower of Babel echoes the theme that God is all-powerful. He comes down. He cares how his people behave. Today he does. He's not up there and just fretting and thinking, uh, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? No. When this world needs judgment, God comes. He knows when. And if you see something that he doesn't like or that's not right, he has the ability to punish people for their infractions. So, um, let me, uh, I, I didn't finish uh, reading all of that. Uh, Revelation 11. He came down, they all have one language, and I'm on uh, verse 5 and 6, and this is what they began to do. Now nothing will, that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language, that they may not be able to understand each other's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Verse 9, Therefore its name is called Babel, because the Lord there confused the language of all on the earth. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. 
Well, we know the same thing happened uh, uh, with um, the pre noahic civilization. They were in rebellion against God. He came and he destroyed. Except he didn't destroy the righteous. He kept the righteous free. This, this Tower of Babel did not include Adam, uh, I'm sorry, Noah or, or Shem, who was uh, the uh, forerunner of the Jews, uh, Shem, the Shemites. Uh, and also he did this with his angels when they came down uh, to Sodom and Gomorrah. And when he went in there and he uh, judged them because he looked down and the evil was so great that he brought his angels down and, uh, and probably a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ to Abram. And they went to the city and they said, Lot, we cannot destroy the city until we get you out. And, of course, Abram had asked, well, what if there's 50 righteous? Are you going to destroy the city? No. Uh, how about 45? How about 40? How about 30? How about 20? How about 10? And uh, he says, if you got 10 people righteous, I won't destroy the city. And, uh, of course, when the angels went in there, two male angels, and they're probably all beautiful in heaven there, I mean, handsome or whatever, and they came on down, and the city of Solomon, all of them came after those angels. And, by the way, uh, I think it was Mark McCarthy that said, but it makes sense, is that they knew they were angels. I mean, they were as men, they came as men, but uh, they may have been taller, they were beautiful, they were magnificent. Uh, Satan is magnificent, he's good, he appears as an angel of light. They come on in there and they wanted to uh, sexually tear them to pieces. And uh, by the way, that is exactly what happens when you go off of God's path and uh, uh, allow yourself to, su to succumb to uh, any type of e evil fornication. Anything that's apart from God's ordained plan, which is holy matrimony. That's it. There is no other. That's it. But it just gravitates downward, Romans chapter 1, is what happened. And of course... Uh, uh, he, uh, as they were, hurry, let's get out of here because he's telling a lot, the angels. Uh, and he took his wife and he took his uh, daughter, but her uh, uh, fiance decided to stay. I'm sure that they told him, you better come because God's going to destroy this. He didn't believe. It doesn't say all of those things, but he was so entrenched in sin and fornication, and every type of diabolical fornication you can imagine. Listen, that's exactly what is happening today. Whoever thought that uh, we'd be on the verge of them trying to uh, legalize uh, pedophilia. And they're coming right out talking about it, or emasculate uh, little children. You know, 11, 12, 13. It's happening. And so God, He's looked down, hasn't He? And He is going to uh, bring judgment to humankind. But it's all in the book of Revelation. We've spent all that time. And just this one uh, addition here. It's reported that soon, and this is a side note, a little commercial. It's reported that soon the capability of AI, artificial intelligent robots, will have the brain capacity of a billion times that of a human being. You can Google that soon, within the next couple of years, that they have sent, sent, sentience, or sentience, there's two ways to say it, one is in uh, the United Kingdom, one's in American, but it just means to already to have the ability to have emotions. Emotions, that's more than just thinking, that's singularity, to be able to think and uh, rationalize. But now they're talking about sentience, that they can feel, that they can have hatred, that they can... Uh, have jealousy that they can uh, have uh, love. That's scary. Uh, and that they will also have the ability within a couple of years to have a billion times the mental uh, capacity of, of, of a human being. All right, so are, 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 we living, are we living in the last days? Well, why do you think we're reading the book of uh, uh, Revelation? It's that time. Okay, um, I do want to get to just this last part, and uh, as as we talked about the pit, 
we also talked about the thrones. We talked about them last time. And we said that they included, uh, well, uh, they, they included uh, the tribulation saints. They included Christians. Well, Christians first, tribulation saints. Then they included uh, the Jews that come out of the tribulation period. Uh, and then they also included those Jews of the Old Testament. So the Christians, the tribulation saints, uh, the, the Jews that come out of the tribulation, but also those who uh, are uh, the Old Testament saints. These are the, the, the candidates, not the candidates, these are the, the ones that verses 4 through 6 are going to be on thrones. We're going to be on thrones. We already, went, we already went through that. But the interesting thing here that uh, I want to uh, uh, make a note of is that Jesus Christ is... Uh, going to be on the throne uh, when he comes down. And um, uh, I, I'll, I'll say these things quickly. It looks like the church, which is the bride of Christ, although there's questions now, is, is the church the bride of Christ and, and Israel? In the temple, when we get to this in Revelation 21, we know that uh, 22, but uh, the, the New Jerusalem that comes down is going to be the building is going to be made up of uh, four four gates. Those that represent the twelve tribes, three and three and three and three, and that the foundation twelve foundations are going to be the twelve apostles. Somehow God's going to bring us together. Does that bride in Revelation speak about the church and Israel? Are we joined yet? And by the way, my personal opinion is is that there, there's too much evidence right now against it. But it could be. But uh, we, we see ourselves uh, in uh, for, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 and 2, that Paul espoused the church as a chaste bride to Christ. Okay, in Ephesians chapter 5, the last few verses, uh, it speaks about Christ's love for the church is the model for a husband loving his wife. And there's more that goes into that. But the church, which is the bride of Christ, will have access to heaven and to earth in our glorified bodies. We're the only ones with glorified bodies. Uh, when did we get them? At the end of the tribulation period? No. Uh, we got them at the rapture, before the tribulation. And so we're the only ones with the uh, glorified bodies. Uh, we do read where... The Jews are coming back, you know. Uh, we're going uh, of the Old Testament, and they'll have to be reunited also. Uh, that will have the glorified bodies. But those who come out of the tribulation period will alive will come out with their bodies, but their physical bodies, and they'll go into the thousand-year millennium. Uh, multitudes of both. Israel and the Gentiles will enter the kingdom on earth not having died. You know, the Jews that come out of Jerusalem when Christ comes back, they, will, they, they didn't die. They will die sometime during the millennium or make it all the way through the thousand years. Uh, these will be uh, tested during the millennial kingdom. And the Gentiles. And Gentiles did not receive the mark of the beast but believed they too will go in with their bodies and live extended lifestyle, uh, lifetimes, as, as, as much as a thousand years. So it looks like the glorified church with their glorified bodies will mingle with the multitudes of those left on earth in their natural bodies on earth because it says we will have authority as kings and priests. Uh, and that's Revelation chapter 1 and verse 6. The risen Old Testament saints will act as priests in Jerusalem. Uh, Exodus 19.6 They shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. And by the way, there's going to be what we understand a co-region or assistant region with Christ ruling. And this is my last point. Uh, let me read from the Bible. And it starts in Ezekiel 37, 21 through 28, and then we close in a word of prayer. But isn't it interesting? We always talking about Christ coming and ruling during the millennium, and He will. But we're also looking at uh, what the Bible says as a assistant or co-regent, 
and after I read this, and I'll explain it uh, briefly. But in Ezekiel 37, 21 through 28, uh, and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel, talking about the last days, this is for the millennium, from among the heathen, wheresoever they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. That's already happened, hasn't it? This is Ezekiel 37, 21 through 28. I'm bringing them back in their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. That's already happened. And one king shall be king to them all, and they shall no more be two nations. What do you mean two nations? Uh, Israel and Judah. They have been separated. Okay? Uh, and neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore. Well, they're not today. They're all together. Neither shall they defile themselves with any more of their idols. Just read all the way through the uh, uh, lifestyle of, of Israel. And uh, there was what? Uh, three kings, four kings, out of all the kings that were uh, good kings. And all the rest were bad kings. And they had gone out and they had married people outside of God's family, of uh, the Jews, and they brought in their idols. And they even had in the holy places set up one for uh, Yahweh and one for whichever uh, idol uh, that uh, was brought in through marriage. So it says, they will not defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. By the way, that's one of the reasons why the 70 years of judgment in Babylon, that they were captured as a, as a people, and that was the 70 weeks of Daniel uh, that was completed. I, not weeks, the 70 years. But weeks, or heptas, mean seven, uh, a period of sevens. And so the, we do know Daniel's 70th week is the week that uh, uh, the Bible prophesies concerning the last days of seven years of judgment. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and cleansed them so they shall be my people. I will be their God. Is that happening today? No. Uh, they are trying to rebuild the temple. Right now they're in the midst of war. That's, that's going to take place. But... Um, they will not be destroyed. The, there's going to become political leaders that's going to come in there and he's going to bring peace uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, and it will be for three and a half years, 1,260 days, 42 months, um, and, uh, or time, times and a half, that's three and a half years. And then the abomination of desolation takes place. And then they'll have to run and hide, but God will protect them the last three and a half years until he comes back and then when the millennium is set up, it says, verse 24 of Ezekiel 37, And David, my servant, shall be king over them. Interesting, isn't it? David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, observe my statutes, and do them. Verse 25, And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant. That's the holy land wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children. We're talking about a long period here. It's going to be a thousand years. It doesn't say a thousand years here. We find that out in Revelation 20, six times. And it says, and their children's children forever. And the term forever in that context means as long as you have a generation on earth uh, for all of your generations, for all of your generations. And my servant David shall be their prince, forever, for all of their generations. But how does this tie in with Christ? Well, let's read it just a little more. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them, multiply them. I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them, the temple. Yea, I will be their God. They shall be my people. That sounds like the church, doesn't it? And uh, so they have the same relationship. And verse 28, And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Now I said that I wanted to make a couple of comments. Where is Christ? Well, these passages that we're talking about with regards to the millennium and David can refer to none other than the long-awaited Messiah. In Isaiah 42, 1, the servant of the Lord. Now, the Jews sometimes 
referred to Messiah as David because it was known that the Messiah would come from what? David's lineage. So therefore, we have the genealogy. We go back and we see that uh, through Joseph, he goes back to, uh, which was his uh, 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 legal father, even though it was his stepfather, not his real father. But he uh, goes back to uh, Judah, which was the uh, tribe of uh, David. The New Testament often refers to Jesus as what? The son of David. The son of David. So, um, Jesus comes and he rules. And let me just share this. David will be resurrected at the beginning of the millennium. All of the Old Testament saints are coming back. Uh, I mean... We know that Moses and Elijah already came back and then they resurrected heaven, but uh, every prophet of the Old Testament, all the believers in the Old Testament are coming back. Uh, and David will be one of those who will reign with Jesus in the kingdom. Now, if we had time, we'd read Daniel 7, 27, and uh, we'd read Daniel 20, uh, uh, Revelation. Uh, we don't. So, what's the point here is Jesus is the King of Kings, Revelation 19.16. Humanly speaking, Jesus is from the Davidic dynasty. But in power and glory and righteousness and every other way, he is rightly called the greater David. The government the Bible says Isaiah 9.6 will be upon his shoulders. Whose shoulders? Christ. The Old and the New Testaments reveals that the future king during the millennium and all eternity is Jesus Christ and Him alone. Jeremiah 23, 5. Jeremiah 23, 5. Isaiah 9, 7. The government shall rest upon His shoulder. Uh, uh, Isaiah 32, 33, 22. Isaiah 33, 22. Revelation 17, 14. 1 Timothy 6, 15. So, here's the Lord ruling on earth. But what about the believers? Christians. Our glorified bodies. It seems to uh, be evidence that we have. We will already have been in heaven. We will have access like the angels back and forth. We will be ruling as kings and priests on the earth along with the other saints. And uh, during this period of time, the Old Testament saints are being brought back, including David. And David will be uh, assisting, or David will be co-regent. But. The King of Kings, Jesus Christ, will be here. And it will seem that Jesus Christ will have access, obviously, going back and forth between heaven and earth. Uh, and that uh, uh, the kingdom of the Jews will also recognize uh, David as, a, uh, uh, as, as uh, an assistant with the, with the idea of the king. I know it sounds like it's... Uh, it's a bit confusing. When you go to the Old Testament, you tie it in with the New Testament, and you find out that uh, of the tribe of, of uh, Judah, and that David is from, or that Jesus is from the uh, lineage of David. Okay, well that's a lot uh, today, but uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer, and uh, just now, uh, Father, thank you that uh, as we look at the Bible, we see things happening. The the thing about CERN, the thing about China, uh, trying to open another dimension, trying to uh, finding some 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 laws that you have put in the universe. Scientists that are finding finding some laws that are touching on um, areas that uh, uh, may be able to break into different dimensions or the time barrier uh, and with Satan's help. But we know that this is all d uh, not beyond your plan and. That the last day Satan's going to take his, his last and final uh, attempt to uh, rule the world and uh, he would like to rule it for eternity but obviously we've, we've already seen the end of Satan when he's taken and he's placed into the first the bottomless pit and then later on in this chapter into the lake of fire so in the meantime Father help us so that we will stand tall and strong and that we will uh, be a witness for you in the days that we have ahead of us for your glory. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.